welcome to our first presentation for today, Dr. Cherie Gambley. Cherie is a principal plant pathologist with the Queensland Department of Agriculture and Fisheries based in Nambour on the Sunshine Coast. The title of Cherie's talk today is What Virus Do I Have? Over to you, Cherie. Thanks, Heidi. Um, so today I'm just going to talk about uh, the viruses that we commonly find in protected cropping. Um, you can get all, all of the diseases that we find in the field, but some are more likely in protected cropping than others. So the um, the first ones off the first off the rank are the thrips transmitted viruses. So the major insect vectors that spread these guys around are western flower thrips, tomato thrips, and melon thrips. Tomato spotted wilt virus is probably the biggest impacting virus in protected cropping and field uh, vegetable production. It's in all states other, except for the Northern Territory. It's got a very wide host range, affects lots of vegetable crops and a lot of ornamentals. Uh, Impatience necrotic spot virus is a new TOSPO virus to Australia. Um, and it's at the moment uh, still only in New South Wales and Victoria. It was first found in 2010 in New South Wales in uh, ornamental um, production and was self-eradicated essentially by the grower. And then it was found again about um, 2019 in New South Wales in lettuce production. Um, and it's established now and it has moved to Victoria as well. It also has a wide host range, including vegetables, weed species and ornamentals. Symptoms of tomato spotted wilt virus, you're getting lots of concentric rings and lines. Um, that's very typical of tomato spotted wilt and all of the TOSPO viruses. You get lots of distortion of, of the fruit. Um, you can see with the tomatoes and the capsicum. And in lettuce, you get a whole range of symptoms from stunting and lots of necrosis. And in patients necrotic spot virus, uh, you can see in the letters, it's not too dissimilar to tomato spotted wilt. So if you're in those areas where you can get both, um, it's really important to get some diagnostics done. And these are just some photos of the ornamentals of what uh, INSV looks like. Again, you're getting the spots and the rings. So the next group are the white fly transmitted viruses. So beet pseudo yellows virus is transmitted by the glasshouse white fly. And we find that in a lot of cucumber crops pretty much up the east coast, uh, Queensland, New South Wales, South Australia. Uh, there is a possibility it would get into melons, uh, but we haven't had any detections in any other uh, cucumber crops other than the cucumbers. Tomato yellow leaf curl virus is transmitted by uh, silver leaf white fly, which is pretty ubiquitous in Queensland. Uh, the, it is a problem in protected cropping in Queensland tomatoes. Uh, and there's just been a recent detection of tomato yellow leaf curl virus in Victoria this year. I believe that's in field crops, but tomato uh, protected cropping tomato uh, people in that area should be uh, on the lookout for it as well. Tomato tirado virus is uh, spread by both silver leaf white fly um, and glasshouse white fly. It uh, only affects tomatoes, but the fact that it's spread by both of these species of whitefly means that all tomato growing districts in Australia are at risk of this virus. I mean, it's, we've, it's been in Australia for a very long time and it hasn't actually moved out of Victoria and South Australia. So we're really lucky that it's still confined to those two states and hasn't moved to Queensland or anywhere else. Um, there is resistant varieties or tolerant varieties for tomato tomato virus, which seem to be helping manage that. Symptoms of beet pseudo yellows virus, um, on, it, you get this typical uh, block of chlorosis um, with beet pseudo yellows, but equally you can also get this really general chlorosis and it looks very, very similar to nutritional um, disorders. In fact, I think the virus was present for a long time in cucumbers before it was diagnosed because it was thought to be nutritional and it was it wasn't uncommon to get 80 to 100% incidences in glass houses, so it did really look nutritional. Tomato gerardo virus, um, the typical symptoms are these black lesions near the leaf petiole. You don't usually get them on the, on the leaf lamina. It's, uh, it's, it's right along that main stem, and you get this scorched appearance, uh, lots of loss of photosynthetic area, so you're getting less fruit set and less yield but the fruit isn't distorted like it is with tomato spotted wilt virus. 
It's muddier leaf curl bows. Um, you get lots of shortened endonodes. The leaves are little, they're yellow. Again, you get lots of photosynthetic area because it's uh, stunted and you get lower fruit set and lower yield. The fruit, again, aren't distorted like spotted wilt. So moving on to the last group, which are the seed transmitter viruses. Uh, Tobamo viruses are the most concerning of these ones uh, because they're so easily spread once you've got them in the system. They're highly, highly contagious. They're, they're often linked with seed borne infections because they are highly seed borne. Hygiene is critical for management of these viruses. There's a few that we have in, in tomato, capsicum and eggplant in Australia. And I think a lot of people are familiar with CGMMV, which is affected cucumbers and melons um, in Australia. I just want to make you aware that there has been incidents of um, counterfeit seed coming into Australia, which are packaged up in what looks to be authentic seed company packaging. Um, and the only way you know that it's not is the barcode. Um, so it's really critical to buy off your local seed rep. The Victorian Department and the Federal Government did a study recently last year on online seed supplies. So they bought through the mail and it's frightening what you can buy through the mail. Um, none of it's certified. It's really high risk. They tested it for viruses and a lot of these tobacco viruses were coming in on that, um, that, uh, that pathway. Please buy through your local rep. Symptoms of tobamos in capsicums, you get the, the distorted fruit and you can get blackened lesions along the stems. Um, CGMMV in cucumbers, uh, you can get a wilt, a green wilt. So there's no, um, it's not like a fusarium wilt where you'd get yellowing. The symptoms on the leaves are a model or a mosaic. They're quite distinctive and you're getting blotching on the cucumber fruits. Uh, there is tolerant reliance now for CGMMV and cucumbers, which are performing quite well. So people can still grow and trade, but there's restrictions around, uh, it's still a regulated pest, so there's restrictions around um, disposal, of, disposal of old planting material and peat and stuff like that. CGMMV in melons is really quite bad. You get lots of internal degradation of the fruit, the fruit are distorted. Um, and I don't think there's any tolerance or resistance to, to melon. And I'm sure quite a few of you are aware there's restrictions on trade to New Zealand because of CGMMV. So what virus, what do you have and what is it? So patterns are really helpful when you're looking in, the, in, in your crop. If you're seeing patches of unhealthy plants, that's more indicative of a disease or a pest than a nutritional disorder. Um, and unhealthy plants can sometimes be near the openings where those insects might bring the disease in. Symptoms can be confused with nutrition or herbicide damage. Typical symptoms depend on the crop and the virus combination and symptoms of several virus diseases are very similar. So it's really important to, um, to get things tested. So what do you do? So the first thing that you should do if you think you have a virus disease outbreak is reduce or stop the movement of people and equipment into that area while you can find out more about what's going on. Find out which virus it is because um, there's specific management um, for some things and avoid moving those affected plants until you understand what, it, what virus it is. If it's a tobacco virus, it's really contagious. And if you try and rogue those plants and take them out of the glass house, you might spread it uh, more. And the earlier the action you can take, the, the less um, loss you'll incur. So what do you need to do? Uh, virus testing is important. You need to know what you've got. Nutrient analysis can help. For example, if you think it might be beet pseudo yellows, you should probably get a nutrient test done as well. Um, other pathogens, it could be those. And all, pretty much all of the jurisdictions have a diagnostic service. And in Queensland, it's Grow Help. And under our current veggie project, these diagnostics are free, so please don't hesitate to contact us and send stuff in if you think you've got a problem. So how do you manage virus? So controlling the virus sources is really important. So good crop hygiene to prevent the disease or to limit spread. Um, remove your old crops, remove weed hosts and manage equipment and people. So how do you control the insect? The, the vectors that spread them. Um, strategic insecticide use is important, so knockdowns of adults on old crops is really useful to um, limit spread into new crops. Biological control agents are very helpful and integrated pest management systems are, are really key. 
Why do you need to remove your old crops? So these are a safe haven for both the virus and the insect vectors. So you can have infected plants, which the insects will just bring straight into the new crops, or you can get really high levels of, of the insect pests, which then can, if you have a little bit of disease in your crop, if you get a big influx of, of new insects um, into the glasshouse, then it'll spread it around. Why do you need to remove weeds? Well, weeds are hosts of the viruses and they're also safe havens for those insects that spread the viruses. So you can try removing, um, replacing them with non-virus hosts um, like native plants or even just grass would be really helpful outside the structures. Uh, how do you manage equipment and people? So decontaminating is, is really useful, um, washing hands obviously or gloves. There was a paper out last year on CGMMV um, in the US. So these products are registered in the US. I'm not sure what's registered here, but they did show really good efficacy against um, to decontaminate equipment in particular. So if these work on CGMMV, they will most likely work on the other Tabemo viruses. Uh, limit the number of people entering the crop and think about on-farm biosecurity manuals. Biocontrol and IPM are very useful. You need to monitor your crops. There's been success in Virginia with spotted and thrips. We're doing collaborative research with companies on strategic insecticide use. Um, that website's really good for all of the suppliers for IPM. And that's me done. Thank you.